every day that we are allowed to enjoy the freedoms and pleasure this country has to offer, a growing number of children are having their innocence ripped away. Under the federal law, anyone who recruits, patronizes, solicits a minor under the age of 18 for the purposes of a commercial sex act can be found guilty of trafficking. Upwards of 80% of all confirmed sex trafficking cases involve U.S. citizens, and up to 40% of those cases involve the sale of children. Unfortunately, to some of our fellow countrymen, destroying the human spirit in a child is a worthy sacrifice for a lucrative and flourishing business. There exists an occultic evil that has been awakened. These demonically fueled agents of sexual abomination regard the bright light of innocence as a trivial and inconvenient flame that must be snuffed out. We must not close our eyes from the sting of the smoke any longer. It's time to stop ignoring the desperate cries of our children. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the program. We have a very special, very serious show planned for you today with some information that every single person needs not to only know about, but this type of information we're going to be talking about today, it needs to be a call to action. On today's show, we are going to be interviewing Josh Peck about his new documentary called Silent Cry, The Darker Side of Trafficking. Yes, there's even a darker sign. There is a sinister wickedness encompassing our country. It doesn't fit any profile, doesn't lend to predictability, and strikes without warning. While this specific evil may sound familiar, and though millions of lives have been brutalized, very few understand how deep it goes. Child sex trafficking is only the beginning. There is an organized, occult effort that sometimes uses these children as sacrifices to ancient, bloodthirsty, demonic entities. Never before has a documentary dared to expose the true depths of this dangerous evil. You're going to be shocked at how common this problem is in our country. And after listening to today's interview and watching this film, which I encourage you to do, you're not going to be the same. In Silent Cry, the most world-renowned experts in the fields of trafficking, pedophilia, and Satanism have come together to warn you about the horrors of our present time, as well as the horrors that are coming. Why? So that you can be prepared to defend yourself and your family when it inevitably arrives. Now, many of you watching this show, you already know my special guest, Josh Peck. Josh Peck works with Skywatch TV as a documentary filmmaker. He is the writer, director, and editor of the blockbuster film Silent Cry, The Darker Side of Trafficking, produced by Skywatch Films. Josh is also the author of numerous best-selling books, including Afterlife, The Second Coming of the New Age, The Day the Earth Stands Still, Unraveling the Multiverse, and also Abaddon Ascending, who he co-authored with best-selling author Tom Horn. Josh is also the founder of Daily Renegade, where he hosts The Peck Report. Please welcome Josh to the program if you're watching online by giving this video a thumbs up. Josh, thank you for being with us here today. Hey, thanks for having me back on, Zach. It's great to talk to you again, always is. And I really appreciate you making time for this topic specifically. It's uh, pervaded our country and it's, uh, it's a really big deal. It really is. And uh, many ministers are, are terrified to... Um, talk about these hard-hitting subjects that have saturated our culture, you know, such as you know, uh, you know, pornography or uh, LGBT. I mean, we, we don't want to touch these things with a with a ten foot pole. But I've said many times that this country goes in the direction that the pulpits are facing. We can't, we cannot be on a bat. We have to preach the gospel. If it's in the word of God, we need to talk about it. We cannot be scared of the truth. God dwells in the light. And so I applaud you for, for tackling such a controversial and uncomfortable topic. 
Because so, many of us, we know it's taking place, child sex trafficking, but we don't even want to think about it. And, and, and that's kind of been my story as well, that it's just like, I know what's happening, but I, 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 and I, and I need to get out in front. I need to be like the men I'm talking about and, and talk about it more on this show, but it's such an uncomfortable topic, but it needs to be dealt with and it needs to be ended. And your documentary, it challenged me in a way no other documentary has, Josh. It's incredible. Listen, I, I just let's just start off. I, you know, we, we have we've had an introduction kind of laying the groundwork, but in your own words, broadly talk about what this film is about and, and, and even who's in the movie and probably even more importantly, what qualifies them to be in this film. Yeah, absolutely. And I can completely relate to uh, how you feel, because I felt the same way before going into this topic about a year ago. Um, you know, child sex trafficking is something that is so horrific. It's stuff that we don't want to think about. But what I realized uh, throughout the process of the film and uh, toward near the end of the film, and we actually conclude the, the film kind of on this note, is I realized that a lot of the reason this has become such a big problem is because so few people want to really deal with it. You know, it's it's not a fun topic. It's not uh, there, there's nothing enjoyable about it. But if we ignore it, if we decide that we're going to live in a world where we ignore that kind of stuff um, and, and push it to the side, it's, it's worse than we're not being a part of the solution. We're actually part of the problem because inactivity is where these abusers want us. That's where they want us to be in a realm of inactivity. So they'll distract us with things like entertainment. And that's why uh, child sex trafficking is so rampant in Hollywood and the entertainment industry. But I am getting ahead of myself. I'm sure we'll uh, we'll get to all that. So the movie deals with child sex trafficking, but it's not a typical trafficking documentary. So trafficking is happening everywhere in America because, like I said, largely it's been ignored, but it goes deeper than that. There's also a rampant occultism tied in with trafficking. Now, my film, it's not focused on unsubstantiated conspiracy theory and wild claims. We, uh, I, I wanted thank to make you sure... For that. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much sensationalism out there on this topic. There's so much sensationalism on social media, uh, Facebook, especially Twitter, all, all of these places, YouTube. Um, and this movie is not that. So uh, we but we also don't sugarcoat the topic. You know, we don't just uh, remain in the realm of statistics and then and then refuse to deal with the human element of it. Uh, so it's it's again not focused on conspiracy, but there is so much darkness that that can be corroborated, that can be uh, shown to be true through uh, a lot of evidence that we d we don't hold back in the movie. So uh, it goes where Silent Cry goes, where no other documentary has gone before in showing the truth of child sex trafficking from experts who have seen and experienced it even firsthand. We have some survivors uh, in this film and in some of the bonus products that come with the film if, uh, if people get it at skywatchtvstore.com. Um, I was really selective on who I invited to be in the film because I, I wanted real experts who are actively working in this field today. Uh, I didn't want just somebody who has a, you know an unqualified opinion. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with unqualified opinions. I've got plenty of them myself. But for this film uh, and for this topic, I wanted to make sure that everything we, that, that I was putting in there was truthful and could be backed up. Um, so there are only seven guests in it. Now, originally I had 12, but due to COVID travel restrictions and things, uh, we weren't able to get five of them. But uh, among those that we weren't able to get, we do have uh, audio interviews that are offered with the movie at skywatchtvstore.com. So people that didn't make it in the film, but made it in the bonus products include uh, Russ Dizdar, Greg Reed, who's a satanic ritual abuse survivor, William Rabsey, who's an investigator, uh, and many others. Um, and so that brings me to who's actually in the film. Uh, first and foremost, we have Yako Bullions, and that might be a name that sounds familiar. He was previously a guest on Skywatch TV. He directed and produced the feature film Eight Days to raise awareness about the reality of sex trafficking in the United States. People can find that on Amazon. Uh, he's the founder of Share Together, which is a nonprofit organization fighting against the global crisis of sex trafficking. Uh, he's been in this fight for years, and he's, he's, he's one of the most stand-up people 
people I've ever met uh, in involved in uh, this issue. We also have his sister, Alanka Deaton. She's a survivor of child sex trafficking, and she tells her whole story in the film. She was and that, uh, that story was was sobering. And it's in the documentary. Yeah. She she was trafficked for around six years, and um, and just to even see her story on, on even just how God has 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 healed her and how God is using her in such a fantastic way. Because at the beginning, I didn't know if she was a Christian or not. And by the end of of her story, you found out that that God that that she is a Christian. She is a worshiper of God, and it was an amazing amazing story. Yes, absolutely. And she's actually Yako's sister. And yeah, I decided to to save the, the Christian element in her story till later, till the recovery, because I want believers and non-believers to watch this. Now I'll tell your audience. I thought, your that, audience... I thought, I thought that's why you did it, because I thought to myself, that is probably why Josh did that, because it, it kind of it, it didn't it didn't matter at that point if she was a Christian or not. Her experiences are real and her experience validate what she's saying. Yeah, absolutely. And so for your audience, you know, I, I'm you know willing to just tell them everybody in the film are they're all Christians. Uh, but you, you don't really learn that until the very end of the movie. And it's because I didn't like I said, I didn't want to give anybody an excuse to just turn it off. So it's not a uh, an overly preachy movie. It does. You know, some. If somebody wasn't a Christian, they might say near the end it gets a little preachy. But you know, I I don't think it is. I think I think they're they're actual solutions uh, that we can participate in, and just ultimately the solution to evil is Jesus, and there's no way around that. So we do talk about that in the film. Um, so she Alanka Deaton's in it. David Hevener, he's kind of our uh, Hollywood insider. He's a producer, actor, musician, filmmaker. He speaks uh, very openly about sex trafficking, and uh, he's he's seen th- some pretty horrific things firsthand in association with his uh, previous work in in Hollywood. But today he works with victims of trafficking and satanic ritual abuse. Uh, Stephen Bancars, he was a previous guest on Skywatch TV for Second Coming of the New Age. He and I, uh, that's a book that he and I authored together. Uh, He's an investigative research um, today into things like child sex trafficking and Satanism. Uh, Before coming before becoming a Christian, he was one of the most well-known voices in the New Age movement. So uh, he has a special place of authority to, to be able to speak on these things. We also have uh, Thomas Dunn, filmmaker and director of Detestable. Some people might be familiar with that. Uh, that can be viewed on Amazon as well. He's an advocate for victims of satanic ritual abuse. He works with others, uh, other experts to assist people coming out of SRA, helping them to adjust to normal life. Uh, We also have Joe Horn and Tom Horn. Joe Horn is the chief operating officer at Skywatch TV. He helps run Whispering Ponies Ranch, which is a ministry dedicated to helping children heal after being rescued from sex trafficking and abuse alongside his mother and his father, Tom and Nita Horn. Uh, He's also author of best-selling book, uh, Time Bomb, and most recently, Unlocking Eden. Uh, Then I mentioned before, Tom Horn's in it as well. And he runs Whispering Ponies Ranch. And I do want to make mention, too, that if anybody, when when people buy the film, 100% of the profits from Silent Cry go directly to Whispering Ponies Ranch, which, again, is a, a ministry dedicated to um, helping kids who have been rescued out of sex trafficking, uh, helping them heal and adjust to a normal life and begin to actually thrive in, in Jesus Christ. So it's a really important ministry. 100% of the profits go there. Uh, it's also narrated by John B. Wells. He has one of the most recognizable voices in America. He hosts Caravan to Midnight. And uh, last but certainly not least, Derek Gilbert also narrates part one of the movie. He's the host of Skywatch TV, Sci Friday, Unraveling Revelation, uh, View from the Bunker, and a lot of other things. So he's a very recognizable person as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you really do. You you have a, an, an A-list team in this documentary, and it was so well put together, uh, Josh. And a lot of people in well, Christianity, they make horrible movies and horrible documentaries that are so tacky and so cheesy that no one, y- you can't enjoy them. You can't yep. enjoy them. And and it really, it was a top-notch documentary. Listen, let's get into some of the meat of, of the content. Okay, Josh? The American government has been involved in more than one cover-up when it comes to child sex trafficking. One such incident took place with a group of traffickers in the 1980s called The Finders. Now, you started your 
documentary tackling the story of the finders right away. Talk about what the finders are, who the founders are, or our finders are, and why did you start with this? Yeah, definitely. I wanted to start by dispelling the myth that we can sit back and just let the government control uh, this issue and solve this problem because it ain't going to happen. Uh, because the, one of the first things that came up in my research was the government involvement in child sex trafficking and, and some of these just horrific crimes. And right, right, right when I say that, I know that some people are going to either be right on board with me and say, yeah, I've been talking about that for years, or they're going to be uh, saying, that's just conspiracy, I'm going to turn off this video. Please leave the video on, I promise this is not conspiracy theory, it is absolute because, because fact. There's, it's, it's probably more important to address the people that are watching this that think that is just conspiracy. Yeah, the, all everything that we put in the movie, in the case of the finders, we get directly from government uh, sources, from documents that can be uh, downloaded today, right now, from the FBI website. So this is all absolutely true. So the case of the finders, um, what what kind of initiated this is in 2018 and 2019, the FBI declassified nearly 650 heavily redacted pages relating to a group known as the finders, which uh, contains evidence that the State Department Department and the CIA was at best complicit, but at worst directly involved uh, and conspired to cover up investigation and charges. So at the time, the public was told kind of a, a really brief story and it wasn't it wasn't really talked about much. It didn't seem like it was that big of a deal, so there weren't a lot of questions asked. So the official story was uh, that the, fi the finders were a post-hippie post-hippie commune of off-the-grid futurists. They were discovered in 1987 in Tallahassee when a woman saw six malnourished children with two well-dressed men at a park, but something didn't seem right, so she called the police, and then two weeks after that call was made, the entire case was dropped and largely forgotten, and that's basically, if anybody knows anything about it from the time, if they were if they were alive at the time when that happened, that's about all they heard. But that that is until today, you know, when we, we actually got some of these documents released. So the government documents say a lot about the finders that wasn't previously released. There's still a lot we don't know because it is heavily, heavily redacted. But from what we can piece together, and and I don't I don't get into speculation or anything like I don't try and fill in these blanks. We just lay out exactly what the documents say and what we can know. And that is horrifying enough. Uh, the We tell can the you, whole can story. You, yeah. Can you share some of the... Um, some of the things that the documents that recently came out, what was different in, in those documents that wasn't previously released? Can you talk about that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And we do tell the whole story in the movie, but we can definitely hit some of the highlights yeah, uh, please. here. So the, the police were the police brought the two men and the children into custody and the two men were uh, uncooperative. They didn't provide ID for themselves or their kid or the, the, the kids. Uh, it was never proven if they were actually their kids or not. Uh, they were unable to prove the children belonged to them. And while they were in uh, custody, the Tallahassee police discovered that there was another case like this in Washington, D.C., and that's how they connected these two uh, and, and found out that there was this finder's cult thing. So they searched properties belonging to what, what was called the finders. They found in these properties, they found hand-drawn pentagrams, they found animal bones, there were other undisclosed pieces of evidence of satanic cult, uh, and cult rituals. They found cages that witnesses said were used to keep children in Cages. during their visits. Yeah. And, Listen, and, 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 and so many people have no idea that this is happening. Yeah. They're locking in, in America. Yep. And yet the government totally, they just erased it. They, they made it appear as if it, as it, as it, as it, it had never happened. And they're literally yeah. trafficking these children. They're putting these children in cages. Listen to what Josh is saying. Yeah, they found documents on the finder's property uh, that that detailed how to obtain children, how to, uh, you, you know, like how to purchase, kidnap, trade children, like sp specific instructions, e even weird things like impregnating women and stuff. It was it was really strange. Uh, but there were actual eyewitness accounts that are recorded in these documents um, that these cages were be were used to, to house children in. But it, it gets even worse as if that's not bad enough. 
uh, gets even worse because, you know, some might say, well, maybe they just discovered it was something else and the eyewitnesses were lying. All right. Well, the medical examiner uh, wouldn't have been lying or that medical examiner would have been fired because what happened was um, during the interrogation of the two men and the children, uh, so they obviously had them sure. in separate rooms. At least two of the children became really ill. Uh, they urinated, defecated on the floor, and so they were medically examined. And during that medical examination, and we have the reports, we show it in the film, the actual medical report, It's two. there was at least two confirmed cases, and it goes into graphic detail too, of sexual abuse of these children. It, like without a doubt that the kids were named Max and Mary, and uh, there's no question about it, they were sexually abused. And we even have the date of that report, the form detailing the abuse from the medical examination had an original date of February 4th. We even know that a copy was made on February 9th, so there's a lot of things that we know. Uh, and again, this is in 1987, but then on February 18th, so this is only two weeks, after the confirmation of sexual abuse was discovered, the entire case against the finders was dropped. No arrests were made. The two men had all charges against them dropped. The children were even sent back with no oh attempts of rehabilitation. Yeah. No attempts of rehabilitation, no foster care. They were sent back. An affidavit written on either either on or February 5th of 1987, so a day or more after the child sex abuse was discovered, uh, that affidavit stated that chil the children were all examined for sexual abuse, but the results were not available at this time. That's what it actually says. So somebody lied because we know it was available at that time. So this was a clear case. This, somebody, from what we can piece together, some unnamed shadow person higher up some unnamed individual uh, called off this investigation. And there, there's even in the documents, there are unnamed investigators that were like irritated by this, that were saying that th this investigation should have never been called off. There's, there's some corruption going on here, that the finders are dangerous, uh, that they've never disbanded even. So they could still be in operation today. We don't know. Um, and there's all sorts of horrific details with this case. But what it really shows, what it really goes to show is at the time, in 1987, um, and, and this is a case too that that spans even decades earlier. The, the earliest reference we can find to uh, the finders actually working with the CIA was 1950, uh, but we tell that that whole story in, in it too. But so since at least 1950, maybe before up to 1987, uh, there was some kind of of collaboration between the finders and our own government, our own American government. Yeah, because uh, it actually. It, even said within within the, the documentary that the finders were utilized by the CIA to yes. spread disinformation, utilized by the CIA to spread disinformation in the United States and overseas. And that was stated in an official report called the finders investigation uh, with the Metropolitan Police Department of Washington, D.C. in their domestic security branch of the police department. It was yep. stated in that report that the finders are utilized by the CIA to, to, to purposely spread disinformation. So, yeah, so whenever the, these men are abusing and trafficking these children, they get caught by, by, by a, a police department or such that, that isn't in the know. It travels up to Washington, D.C., and those that are in control there that are evil and sadistic, they put a stop to it immediately. Immediately, nope, this isn't going forward. This is the type of things that our, our government is is involved with. It's it just, it's it's shocking, Josh. It's shocking. Yeah. yeah, and it would be foolish to think that the government has just cleaned up its act since 1987. They got away with it then. We didn't find out till literally just a few months ago what really happened. But even now, very few people are talking about it, even though these these documents, they're available right on the FBI Vault website. Like anybody can go and find these documents and piece them together and, and read what happened. But there's no outcry. There, there's Because again, too many people ignore this issue. It sounds too much like conspiracy theory, even though it's clearly not. It's absolute truth. It's it's just, it's there. Um, but it Did anyone try to expose it? Did anybody try yes. to expose what was going on? 
Yeah, all the evidence was ignored and dismissed without any real answer given. So we know there was at least a cover up, but you know why the cover up is another question. But the best that we have in the documents and speculation from someone who appears to be close uh, with the case who expressed his suspicion in an official report from uh, the domestic security branch of the police department in, in D.C., he, he tried to expose it. Apparently, he tried quite a bit and just got nowhere with it. And there was a couple others later, too, that uh, tried. And now now I'm, I'm just the most recent one that has tried to to uh, expose it. But he wrote way back then, he wrote that he believed the finders were utilized by the CEA as a, like you mentioned, as a disinformation service. He says that they are capable of destructive and illegal activities. He refers to them as a cult. Um, he says that he didn't believe the sexual abuse of children was originally planned, but it sprung up due to the sick and demented subjects who belonged to this cult. He believed that the shaping of the children was a planned experiment, such as the Nazis. He actually compares it to the Nazis towards a perfect society. Uh, he also said that he did not believe that the fi finders ever disbanded, which makes us wonder, are they still active in the government today? And it seems like they would, because why would they stop? They got away with it. Uh, and it also makes us wonder what horrific levels of corruption are going on in the government now that won't be released for another 30 years. So this is why we cannot trust the government to solve this problem. And it's going to be up to us as individuals to decide to make a stand and start turning this culture around back towards God, back towards wholesome things things, you know, back to, and there's a lot of ways we can do that. One of the most important is, you know, stay away from pornography and vote with your dollar. Don't buy movies that are sexually explicit. You know, if, if Netflix is going to air something like cuties, then cancel Netflix, which a lot of people did. Thank God. Amen. Listen, Josh, we, we want to have you back for an entire, uh, other program and, sure. and just tell the people really quickly, where can they go and purchase this documentary? Absolutely. SkywatchTVStore.com is the best place to go to get the DVD. It also comes with a lot of other bonus DVDs. This is extra interviews with other experts that we weren't able to bring into the movie. Uh, it's extra interviews with the experts from the movie itself. We also have audio series. We have a whole lot of materials, uh, and it's only a th it's only for a $35 donation at uh, SkywatchTVStore.com. And remember, 100% of the profits uh, for that all go to Whispering Ponies Ranch. If they just want to to get the movie, if they want to stream the movie, they can do so on Amazon. They can rent it or they can buy it on Amazon. And I would ask, however, however people decide to watch it, please leave a review on Amazon uh, and IMDb. It's on both, but it's incredibly important that we get a lot of good reviews for this because we want Amazon to start suggesting it to their audience. And if they do that, this can go worldwide. I mean, there would be no stopping it at that point. So that's what we're really hoping for. And again, it's not for my fame and, it, and it's not just so I can sell a DVD. It's for children that the profits of this movie will help, but also uh, the families that could be saved by getting the information that's in this movie, knowing how to protect themselves and their kids and all of us working together to build a better and more safe culture uh, and America for our children. Amen. Josh, thank you so much for being on the program with us uh, this thank week. You. Everybody watching, uh, stay tuned in for next week. We have even, that was the first story in the documentary. We're gonna get into trafficking and statistics. We're gonna get back into the Epstein case. We're gonna tie it into how it is connected to the occult, truly the occult. All of that and more on next week's program. You're not gonna to want to miss it.